Hello, Facebook, Steve Woody here for Online Mastery, Midday Mastery, episode number 16. I hope you're all well, thanks for joining me. Today we're gonna to be talking about initial product offers, and I wanna try and keep this respectably short today. I know I can waffle sometimes on these things, and I apologize for that, but it's quite a simple one today. Because when I talk about an initial product offer, if you looked at yesterday's video, I talked about the opt-in and how you can use an opt-in and the reason that you might use an opt-in to gather the information for the people that you want to nurture and you want to become your customers. But the reason I talk about the initial product offer is because when we look at a sales funnel, and we mentioned this before, you want to capture as many people as you can into the, the starting stage of this. Now, we do this through the opt-in where we will get them to know, like, and trust us. But when we get to the point where they are going to purchase and we're going to take somebody from a subscriber into a customer, there's a transition. There's a real transition between a subscriber or somebody who's viewing your content, a consumer, to someone who's actually purchasing and giving you money and becoming a customer. And for somebody to become a customer, we need to take them through a process. And what we need to do, ideally, is give them the opportunity to become a customer so easily that it's almost like a no-brainer for them. It's so obvious for them that they want to become a customer that we make it so simple, we make it so easy that they can't say no. And the best way that we do that is with what is called an initial product offer. Now, this will have lots of different names. Some people call it a tripwire. In the internet marketing world, they call it a tripwire. I don't like that because the whole capture page and tripwire and if I feel like I'm in the SAS trying to snare a bear or something it's you know these are customers these are people that I don't want to use a terminology that I'm trying to capture or trip or I'm trying to you know whatever you want to call it for somebody for me it's more about how can I add yeah an ethical bribe this is that's another way I don't like the word bribe but the ethical kind of makes it all right yeah um and by the way hi guys thanks for being here everyone the idea of the initial product offer is it is your opportunity, okay? It is your opportunity to show value. So we are going to show value and we are going to show the potential customer that if they make a small investment, okay? A small investment, a bit like the investment I made in this pen, which doesn't work anymore. A small investment so that they can test your value so that they can see that you can deliver value. Now, this could be anything from a seven pound or a 17 pound or even like a 47 pound product, something that is relatively low value, something that is relatively low value, that if you were to say, do you know what? I can spend seven pound on it. I don't mind throwing 10 pound into that. If this turns out to be complete crap and I've wasted 20 quid, then, all right, that's a couple of pints. Or, you know, that's an expensive coffee in London. Whatever you want to look at it, however you want to look at it, the justification is that when they spend money with you, they need to see a return. They're going to, they're spending the money, they're paying for something. Ideally, you've got to consider that it is an investment. People are making an investment for you, and a bit like my housemate who invested in these amazing marker pens, which I've got now, so I can get rid of the the, the ones that weren't working very well and move on to these bad boys. So more value already, right? What I want to do is I want to look at what you can do in your business. So we talked about the opt-in. You've got their contact information. You've given them something in return. Ideally, as we mentioned yesterday, you'll have an ad or something with a video or something with some information that you'll take them through and this will talk about one thing. So this one thing that they talk about will lead them through to a solution. And as my friend Marisa Murgatroyd from liveyourmessage.com talks about, and I love what she does, she says that people are so focused on sales funnels. And I get it, people are. And the funnel has become the new, like, it's not about a website anymore, it's about, we need a funnel, and we've got these funnel experts, and everything's about creating funnels, and with what Russell Brunson's doing with ClickFunnels, and the way that he's building this whole community, and this tribe around these funnel hackers, everyone's getting so hooked up these days on the idea of funnels. But the reality is that a funnel is a finite thing. You're taking somebody from A to B. 
in reality, business is not like that. And I realise you can't actually see that. There we go. You're taking people from A to B. Now, in reality, business isn't like that. And people may actually jump in at any point. And you need to have the ability for them to jump in at whatever's right for them. And the thing is, once they get to B, you need to be willing to take them to C. Because the question should not be, how do I get them from A to B? It should be, what's next? And if you change the question to what's next, then you will constantly evolve and you will constantly add more value. Because once they've got here, once you've solved this problem, because remember, this is a solution to a problem. So if we go back to the customer journey, we look through everything that I've taught you so far. The whole idea is people have a problem and you are offering a solution. So how do we get them from their problem to their solution? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to make them aware of their problem. They need to be aware they've got a problem. They need to know that we can add some value, that we can show them that, hold, hold on a minute, remember before when I said someone's been shot? You don't turn around to them and say you've been shot because that will freak them out. First thing you do is you give them some morphine. So this is the morphine. This is the first thing that you do to tell them, oh, by the way, I know you're in pain. This will help. This will take away the pain. Right, great. Now we've taken away the pain, we've added the value, how can we now stop the pain from ever happening again? How can we continue to add value? And so this is where they become a customer, and it's through the IPO. So this is a transition to make sure that they're not just consuming material, that they're actually willing to become a customer, and they're actually willing to invest in you to take it to the next step. This is where you will lose so many people, but that's not a bad thing. Your, your outcome here is not to convert every single person who comes into your opt-in. Your, your purpose here is not to make sure that you win all of this business. Your outcome here is to win the business of the people who want to make a difference, who want to change, who want to take action. And if you can identify who... This is a vetting process. That's all this is. This, this whole thing here that they call a funnel is no more than just a vetting process to find out who's serious. And out of the you know, 100 people that may come into this funnel, you may only get two people that come out the back end of it. And that's absolutely fine, because that means that the funnel's done its job. Your idea is to hold people at this space until they either disappear or they're ready to, to move on. And then they progress and they progress and they progress. And the more that they progress, the more access to you they get, the more they get your time, the more they get your, um, your knowledge and your expertise, the more you can help them. You see, the thing is, and this is what I've always been told, and I agree with this, you can give all of your information away for free. Some people are like, oh, but that's really sacred and I need to look after that. The reality is that people will take your knowledge, but not everyone will implement it. You see, knowledge you can give away up here, implementation comes down here. And people will always want you to implement for them. I have people who are hiring me now because they want me to do the work. Now, all right, I don't do the work myself anymore, but I do have a team that does it for me. And the fact that I've now hired designers and developers and I've, I'm building, I'm actually turning myself into an agency, which the, ir the irony of this is, is I sat on stage in Las Vegas a couple of years ago with a good friend of mine, Terence, who actually runs a very successful agency called Goat Social over in Canada. And his agency, it's an award-winning agency, uh, we sat on stage and we discussed the difference between myself as a solo entrepreneur and as himself as an agency and the difference between the two. And the reality is that whilst... I was in the place I was in. It was great for me as a startup, as a small business owner, as an entrepreneur, as an individual. It was fantastic. I had the ability. But the more that I grow and the more I look back in hindsight, I realized that he was right. And it wasn't that there was a right or a wrong. I was right for where I was at that point in time. But I'm evolving and I'm growing. And as a result, I can't do everything on my own anymore. I need a team to support me because I will only ever be as good as the team that I have in place. And so I'm always looking, always looking for people. So if you have or know anyone who is a designer, a developer, sales and marketing expert, admin, I'm looking. I'm always looking for the right people. And here's what I found and something that I've learned. If I don't have a position and the right person comes along, I will create a position. Because I believe that having the right person in your business is worth its weight in gold. And so all of these processes, all of this automation, all of the stuff I've done here leads me down to the solution. Because as I say... What's next? What's next? What's next? Yes, and an opt-in 
I may do a Facebook Live. I may add value. I may do some stuff that tells people, look, this is what you need. You need a customer journey. You need a customer avatar. You know, you need to understand sales and conversions. Like these are things that you need in your website and when you get started. But as they as they progress and progress, and I say, what's next? What's next? What's next? I can't deliver the done for you solutions anymore. I don't want to. So I have to have a team in place. So it gets you to think a little bit more sort of outside of the box in terms of what you're doing now and where you want to be in terms of your own business and the business of your clients. And so what I want you to do and today, the thing I really want you to take away from this is that when you start and you have the ad that goes into the value that you add when you start and you start to build up this relationship and you start to send them emails and you start to nurture them, one of two things is going to happen. And this is where you need to be aware because this unfortunately, is where a lot of trouble can occur. And the reason that a lot of trouble can occur is because you will find that most of your problems will come from people who don't pay you anything. It will be the people who consume your free content, don't take action on it, and then proceed to badmouth you on public forums about how crap your stuff is, even though they've no intention of investing in you. They've no intention of taking the action. And so... These are the people that will cause you the most harm in terms of your brand, who cause you the most problems in terms of like you not feeling like you've got self-worth, you're not feeling like you're, um, you're delivering enough value. Hey, gal, nice to see you. And so it really makes sense in the early stages to filter out the people that are going to waste your time because you only want people that are going to take action. It's not your job to convince someone that they need to change. That's up to them. Your job is to tell the people who are ready that you know the next step and to not focus too much on the people that are struggling, not focus too much on the people that have got problems, but instead create a system for the ones who are ready to move forward. Of course, you can have stuff up here and that's absolutely fine. I'm not saying you can't. I've got stuff. You know, if people are telling me they're financially challenged, that's great. Read my book. I've got stuff in place. I've got products out there to help people who are not in a position to work directly one on one with me. And that's absolutely fine. See, it's more about getting the outcome. And for me, it's not always about the financial outcome, but it's about making sure that they get the results. Remember, the reason we're doing this, although we're talking about money, the reason we're doing this is because it's a result for the customer, for the client, for the person. And for them to get the result, they need to take action. And so the action here is, you know, opting in. Are they willing to opt in? Yes or no? If yes, great. What's next? If no, great. Goodbye. If they're ready to opt in and they've opted in, are they ready to become a customer? Yes, great, become a customer. No, great. Can we keep them opted in until they're ready to become a customer? Yes, great, we'll keep them there and we'll nurture them. No, great, goodbye. Okay, so they're ready to purchase. And then we can look at what are they willing to purchase? What can I add in value that's not going to overwhelm them, that's going to solve a problem, a small problem, that's going to show them that they can trust us, that's going to show them that they can believe in us, that they, can, that they can see the value, that they can get a result. Because here's the other problem. If you give away free content, and, you, and, you get, and this is what happens with a lot of people, they get caught in this loop. Well, they have an opt-in, okay? So you have an opt-in, and then you deliver value, and what happens is you then, rather than actually getting them to become a customer, so instead of doing the IPO, which is what some people need to do. They don't do this. There is no IPO. Instead, what they do is they continue to add more value. And what happens is people go through in this, it's, it's almost like a, a, a repeating cycle. You add value and then you add more value and you add more value and you add more value and you add more value. And what happens is people get caught in this process and they forget, they forget to ask for the money. And I see this happen all the time. And where people forget to ask for the money, what happens, and this is it's just an awareness, is you educate people. You educate people to not pay you. You educate people to not give you money. And in educating people to not give you money, when you eventually do say, do you know what, now it's time to pay me, they're like, whoa, hold on a minute. But I've got all this value for free. Why should I pay you now? Because in your mind, you think that you're doing the right thing by adding value and adding value and adding value. But in fact, you're doing a disservice because if you're not charging for that value, then they will never appreciate it to the level that you do. They will never appreciate it to the same level that someone has to pay for it. There is real leverage in financial commitment. And in that leverage, it gets people to take action. So I would ask you to consider, yesterday we talked about the opt-in. What can you do? 
And there was a fantastic example that I used between having a free opt-in and having an opt-in where I would take someone from an ad to a video. They would go from the ad to the video. Now, I would do that without even asking for a name, without even asking for an email address because I'm adding value. And then I would ask for the opt-in in order to give them something that would help them, that would assist them in that journey. So here, here's a problem, here's a solution. If you want to get that solution quicker, then opt-in. Then I can take you through a process to get you there quicker. Great, there's your opt-in, we did that yesterday. Today I'm talking about, right, now they're opted in, now you've got them in this nurture sequence. Now you're sending them these emails, now you've got to ask the question, are they ready to buy? Are they ready? And it's going to be a simple yes or no. No, okay, then we'll keep nurturing them. I realise that I'm writing over stuff here, I'm sorry. Are they ready to buy, yes or no? Yes, great, buy. Simple. Are they ready to buy? No, keep nurturing them. Are they ready to buy? No, keep nurturing them. Are they ready to buy? And you may do this sort of one, two, three times, and after the third time, you may say, are they ever going to buy? And if not, then okay, let's let them go. Because you don't want to keep them in that pattern forever. You need to have something in place where you say, right, okay, let's check in every quarter. Every three months, we'll check in. Are you ready to buy now? Are you ready to buy now? No, okay. Then you can keep getting this value, but at some point, I need to draw a line and say, do you know what? There's something wrong here. Something's broken. If you're in a loop, if you're just going around in a circle, then don't forget, at the end of the day, yes, you want to help people. Yes, you want to get people to their outcome. Yes, you want to solve their problems. But at the same time, if you're a business owner and you have a business, you also have a duty as the ambassador for your company. You have a duty to create profit. If you have a business, then you have a duty as the ambassador for that business. There's no emotion here. This is purely logistical. And the logic of this and the logistics of this is that for you to have a successful business, you need to make money. And for you to make money, you need to charge people. So let go of whatever self-worth, let go of whatever issues of, you know, how you perceive yourself and how you feel other people may perceive you. This is business. And if people are not willing to give you money, then you should not be willing to give them the solution. Because they need to take action and they need to commit. And if they're not willing to take the easy way that you figured out for them, then let them go and figure it out somewhere else. And do not be afraid to say no. You are not here to help everybody. You are only here to help the people who are ready to take the next step. Remember, ask the question, what's next? That's what's going to make the difference. I hope this has been valuable. I hope you've helped. Uh, it's helped you understand a little bit more. Sorry, I know this is like, what when you look at it. When you break it down, it's really simple. You've got your opt-in. The next stage is your initial product offer. What can you offer at a low enough value? And this, there's no right or wrong answer to this, by the way. You need to test this. You need to maybe have a £10 product and have a £30 product and see which one sells best. And then maybe have a £20 profit and you need to split test and you need to work out. I would go for maybe £10 and £50. And if the £50 doesn't convert, come down to 40 and then you've got 10 and 40. All right, you're getting a few sales at 40. Okay, but you're getting a lot more sales at 10. All right, what happens if we go to 25 pounds? 25, boom. All of a sudden, we've hit the sweet spot because we've tested. We've looked at the data. We've analyzed it. We've figured out what works. We've got to a point where we say, do you know what? 25 pounds is what works. That's my initial product offer. And now I'm getting case studies and testimonials and reviews, so I know I can use them to recommend other people to this. You've got to understand that there's a process behind this. This isn't just, oh, let's throw it up quickly and make some money. That's not what I'm doing here. If that's what you want, then there's, there's other places you can go for this. What I'm trying to do here is give you the logic, give you the understanding of how you can go and create this for yourself, how you can test this so it works for you in your business, and how you can adapt, improvise, and overcome. Because there will be challenges. Things will come up. And you need to know that you've got the ability to come back to this drawing board and say, actually, do you know what? This isn't quite working. Let's tweak this. Let's change this. You need a more strategic overview of your business. This is what I'm talking about when I say work on your business, not in it. When you're worried about if your hosting provider works or, oh my God, this contact form's broken, that's the shit that's going to keep you going day in, day out because there's always going to be problems. But when you can take a step back, when you can look at this and say, actually, from a strategic perspective, this is what I need to do. I want to create a new opt-in that has a new um, initial product offer that leads people into my 
core offer, which is what we're going to talk about tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be talking about core offers, pricing, structure, and how you can do a few different things. I'm going to give you an example of a few different sales funnels that you can use and ones that I'm using right now. In fact, I'll give you the exact sales funnel that I used to generate 30 grand in this last month because I know it's not quite the end of March yet, I'll show you how I've generated 30 grand into my business this month, purely through one simple sales funnel. And I can tell you now, it is not what you think. It is not what you think. It was a two-step process. It was this. That was it. That's all I've done. I didn't build all of this out. I didn't need to, because it was already there, because I had it from before. And I'm going to talk you through that tomorrow. So I hope this has been valuable. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks everyone for joining. Any questions, please put them below. Um, if you know anybody that you think would value from any of this, I mentioned yesterday my opt-in is onlinemastery.co.uk forward slash get hyphen started or just forward slash start, whatever you prefer. I would recommend that you check that out. And the reason I would recommend you check that out is because it's really, really bloody good. It really, really helps. One, the person asks some simple questions. And don't just fill the form in. Like, it's really easy to go onto my opt-in. In fact, just go to onlinemastery.co.uk and when you go down on the homepage, you'll see the Get Started button. Click that. Don't look at that as a, okay, I'm going to answer the questions. Like, don't just blindly answer them. Look at how I've done it. Look at the questions and understand the meaning behind the questions. One of them, for example, one of my questions is, do you prefer to work on your own? in a group, or do you prefer to have things done for you? That's a really simple question, but what I'm doing there is a budget question. I'm saying, have you got time or have you got money? Because if someone says I prefer to do things on my own, normally people do things, on, I'm not saying all the time, but people will tend to like to do things on their own. If one, they wanna learn something, or maybe they don't have a lot of money and so they do it themselves. Some people prefer to work in a group environment, but the people that like other people to do it for them, are the people who value their time and are like, do you know what, I don't really have the time for this, I've got some money, I'd rather someone does it for me. And so that simple question allows me to say, do, you, do, I, do I direct you to my book or do I direct you to a consultation? And it's really effective in understanding. Now it's a simple question, it's not me saying how much money have you got to spend? Because most people don't have a clue, they can't answer that. So don't just look at what I'm doing and go through the process of answering the questions, but look at what happens when you answer a question. Go back through the process and answer the question differently and see what happens. Every time you answer a question, you get taken on a different journey. I've got about 15 different journeys depending on how you answer the questions. And the next question is different to the previous one. And so I've set this whole thing up because that is my opt-in. That is my way of filtering people through this process. Because now I know the people that fill it in. When people get to my workbook and they start completing the workbook, I know who I want to work with before they do. Because I can see the effort and the attention and the energy that's going into it. And I'm like, do you know what? Even if their product or service or even if what they're creating is crap, it doesn't matter. Because if they've got the energy and the enthusiasm and the drive, they'll find a way. They'll find it. Because having a bad product or having a bad business, that can be tweaked. But having a bad mindset, that takes time. And that's not something I'm willing to go through. Because I'm not here to coach people on getting a better mindset. I'm not here to coach people on their personal problems. We've all got them. I'm here to take people's business to the next level and to get results. So you need to understand what you're doing. Like in my personal life, I'll help everyone. I'll be there and I'll help people personally through any problems I've got and I won't charge them for it because I'm a fucking nice guy and that's what I do. And I've got friends who are there for me when I'm going through this shit. And we don't charge each other for that because that's what we do, we're friends. That's the circle of people that I hang around with. But in business, like I don't, I mean this with love, I don't care about your problems in business. I don't care if, you know, you've got money issues and I don't care if like you've got client issues in, in, and, and you've got problems from your past or your last developer screwdriver. I don't care about anything that's happening in your past. I care about where you are right now. I care about your audience. I care about how you're going to give them a solution and how you're going to take them from the process of the problem to the solution and how you're going to do that in a way that serves you and serves them and serves the business. That's what I care about because it's a business and I'm focused on this. So you need to look at your business and what you're focused on. Stop being so wide, narrow the funnel down a little bit, tweak it, engineer it, make sure it works, and then move on to the next one. Don't create the whole process at once, just do it one step at a time. Make sense? Have an amazing day, and I will speak to you tomorrow. Take care. Again, if you feel like this is beneficial to anyone, please tag their names below. Really appreciate that. Uh, I'm always grateful if you share this or if you comment. 
um, and sending loves and hearts. Gal, thank you very much. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Have an amazing day. I'll be back here tomorrow at 12 o'clock. We'll go through this again, talk all about core offers uh, and continue this sales funnel or this customer journey. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.